It's time to hone your real estate sales skills. On the 150th episode of the Wandering But Not Lost podcast. Welcome to Wandering But Not Lost, your online source for finding balance so that you can align, connect, and prosper. I'm living right here and now and I don't want to miss out. Is this what life's all about? The world is calling and I'm listening. And now your hosts, Jen O'Brien and Matt Emerson. Well, welcome to the Wandering But Not Lost podcast where real estate and reality meet. This is episode 150 and you can find all of our show notes over at WBNLpodcast.com. Jen O'Brien, kind of a milestone podcast. What the hell? It's the 150th and milestone first podcast officially in Florida. I, we've talked about right. this while I've been here and while you've been in Florida, but this is my new home. Moved here right. two days ago. This is the initial setup, but wait until next week, folks. Can I just tell you, <laughs> listeners and watchers, Jan O'Brien has had a goal to move to Florida for several years now. And, you know, the dates have kind of fluctuated. She zoned in on this last, this this time of the year, you know, probably last you know, about five, four or five months ago. It really wasn't that long ago when you said, you know what, I'm moving after the first of the year. And she made it happen. That is a, that is a true testament of... Uh, setting your intentions, uh, following your path, and actually implementing your plan. So I am so proud of you, Jan O'Brien, for taking taking that step, and I know you're going to be happy down there. I am. Thanks for uh, realizing that or bringing that to, rea- to reality, because I really did practice what I preach. I mean, yep. I had Florida on my phone. I had everything intention and set up and just That's everything right. flowed with because I was really what I wanted to do. So that is how you make things happen. Goal That's right. Goal on happen. So this is what we're going to talk about today. We're really excited about all the new content and the new, I was just alluding to it, we, our other partner, Cosmo Robbie, has got Matt and I really diving into becoming better videographers. Oh. Let's just say we've, we've invested in the proper equipment so that we're going to be looking better, uh, higher quality for content for our training programs, as well as our YouTube and our podcast. So I am, we're hoping the goal is, there's no hoping next week just tune in and check out our youtube uh, channel definitely subscribe if you're not uh, like our videos so that you can get and hit the notification bells because you you know when you you definitely want to know when we have new content i'm telling you i'm really getting a lot of information from youtube i've switched gears after learning so much about it matt because um i'm here and not without we're not going to use cable i'm staying with my sister now and they have made the adjustment to just using streaming services and finding way other ways. And YouTube has so much content for live streaming and so forth and getting the news. But there you have it, right? So now I've been very selective in who I subscribe to on uh, YouTube. So I only want to get the content from the creators that I like. That you want, it's right? An easy way to do things. So you're listening to the Wandering But Not Lost podcast, where real estate and reality meet. Join us and subscribe on Apple Podcasts, Stitcher, Spotify iHeartRadio, Google Play, and now on YouTube. Last week in the podcast, we talked about certain activities that, uh, daily activities really, if you really embrace them, I believe you can two times, three times your your goals, your income. Today, I want to focus on skills um, for a reminder, because you know what? We can all hone our real estate sales skills, and honestly, these are sales skills for any sales business, okay? Uh, so why don't we dive in and, and I'm going to share some ideas and give you some thoughts on how you could integrate this into your overall plan for the year and be intentional about working on or maybe identifying what areas you need to work on because that also, if you if you really hone and perfect these skills and go back to it or recognize that maybe you're not at grade or one or two of them and you work on them, then it's going to help you close more transactions and there again, double or triple your income. Okay. Right. So we have some content for you today. Uh, So let me go ahead and bring that up. And that is what we're gonna talk about right here, honing your uh, real estate sales skills. So what's the first one, first set? Communicating and listening. All right, so this is, oh my gosh, this is probably one of the, boy, if I could just get a hold of everybody, every real estate agent and just say, could you work on your communication and listening skills? (laughs) We would have such a better experience all around between us you know, as professionals and between your clients. 
So communicating is listening also. So the very first point I want to make here is you have to communicate in such a way that you can build trust and rapport with your customers. This is going to help you with the other skills. If you have trust and rapport, then you're going to be able to close more transactions and get people to work with you. Now, two things that you can, two or three things that you can use with this that you need to practice and learn if you're not aware of it is being intentional with understanding personality styles and communication styles. Okay. So I'm going to, Matt, I'm going to share a different thing really quick here. And so these are notes. If you're watching on YouTube, obviously you can see it, but if you're listening to the podcast, I'm going to walk through it. Actually, I'm not going to pull it up. I'm just going to tell you that there's a download that you can get that walks through the personality styles that if you want to call it disc, if you're familiar with disc, um, I use words like dominant or driver. The I is for the person who's the influencer, the promoter. Uh, those are the kind of the key words for that. The S is for the steady supporter relationship based person. And the C is for the analyzer or the thinker. Anyway, there's a great document you can download today from our show notes over at wbnlcoaching.com that gives you the key buzzwords and the ways for you to very quickly. In fact, if you printed this document out and carried it around with you for a while until you, you understand it better, it will really help you. It's a bit of a guide, a matrix, a grid for characteristics. What's their pace, their priority? What do they want a person who's a DIS or C? What do they want you to be like? What do they fear? How do they work under tension? Uh, what irritates them? What are their shortcomings? How do they make decisions? Uh, that's super important, right? In real estate, doing your sales is that, first of all, you have to understand who you are. So you have to do some training. If you're not familiar with this, go get some training on this so that you can understand who are you and then how do you relate to the different styles of personality? Can you know what, Jen, on that point, you know, talking about what you had said just previously about that uh, you need to listen, um, every one of these categories, no matter what color you are, no matter if you're a DIS or C, people want to be heard. I so this thing is, is the key ingredient and, you know, which goes into your third bullet point there, right? I hear you. Uh, the, the thing on communication styles are people are either generally, primarily, primarily visual, auditory or kinesthetic or sometimes a combination thereof. The majority of the population is visual. They need to see things to really connect with them. There's a, a smaller group of people that are auditory. Hearing is more important to them. And then kinesthetic people are the tactile people. They have to sort of feel it. They're a little bit more emotional. These are all key things to understanding people, which is a sales skill. You can, you can study NLP, neuro, neuro linguistic programming. There's books and courses and online. Go to YouTube. YouTube, just Google. NLP and get in uh, communication styles and just get and teach yourself these things if you're not familiar with it. And to Matt's point, active listening, Matt is a great listener. I tell him this all the time. <laughs> uh, as a sales, as salespeople, as people that are choosing our profession, we all have we all tend to be more talkative and not listeners. And this is a this is a skill set that I have been working on my whole life, <laughs> being able to listen and not be quick. My MO is more like, okay, I think I know what you're doing. And being a manager for years, it would be like, I don't really want, need to listen to all of that. Let me just fix your problem. Right. So that doesn't help with rapport. People don't feel that they're respected to your point, Matt. So active listening is really stopping a couple of tips on active listening. And this is me speaking that I have to work on. So when someone is speaking, you're actually listening to them and not thinking about other things or thinking about how you're gonna to respond to something. That is a very uh, tough skill to master if it's not natural to you. I think for you, Matt, that's more natural. You're really with somebody when you're listening to them, aren't you? I'll just say, I'll j let me jump in here. I absolutely, this is, this is what has made my success in every job I've ever had everything I've ever done. And yes, it is kind of natural for me, but at the same time, I don't, I process things a little bit differently. Mm -hmm. I, I do need to listen and kind of take it all in and see what's going on. So I do, I do listen and don't multitask when, but, and here's the thing, people, if you think you can trick somebody by looking at them a certain way, but still when you're off multitasking mm -hmm. someone else, you, they know, <laughs> they always know. This, is, they don't this is the most genuine to me anyway. And this is why I've connected with so many people over the years that, that you, this is a genuine connection. That listening skill is a genuine connection. 
And then to this point that you're making, how the person knows they've been heard is if you're able to give the information back to them. And that is that key, you know, seek to be understood, right? So you are communicating with someone and don't just make an assumption. If you can honestly say, so Matt, what I hear you saying is boom, 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 boom. They're going to go, yeah, you get me or no, you totally didn't hear that. Right. right. So that's how you can have clear communication and not have miscommunication. All right. So exactly. Listening, this is something that just identify. So as I go through these today, my recommendation to you is to say, you know, rate yourself on a scale of one to 10. As I go through this, where do you need some improvement? And then later you can put a bit of an action plan together and, and start working on this and being intentional with it. Okay. So the next uh, set of skills to master, to hone, to refine is base, is prospecting and converting leads. Okay. So I don't really like the word prospecting, but I needed to put it in here. I almost had an alliteration going initially with presentation and prospecting and, so, but anyway, can't always have the alliteration, but prospecting, everybody knows what I mean here. This is the ability to have a dialogue with someone in whatever area that is your niche, your specialty, uh, following up with your own past clients, new people, you have to have, you have to feel comfortable with what you're saying. So if you're new, there's, there's absolutely nothing wrong with going with some scripts, tried and true scripts and dialogues, use those. What I, what I recommend is get the scripts and dialogues. You can get tons of that stuff online. We have a lot of that and just go through a lot of our training. In fact, if you Google it, you may find some of our stuff yep. uh, that's out there. But I believe in taking a script and then turning it into yours. Put it in the language that you can, so you can build trust and rapport and you're leveraging the things we just talked about. Uh, you use different, sometimes you use different terms with the type of person you're working with to help build that rapport uh, by, by being aware of how they prefer to be connected with. Right. So that's what we mean there. And it's not just prospecting and having conversations. It's how do you nurture and follow up? And what do you say for someone who's waiting three to six months? What is it that you follow up with? And how do you say that? You got to work on that. You can leverage things like your CRM, other tools, but not, you have, you can't, the, the technology that you're using isn't a hundred percent going to, is not really going to close. It's going to help. Don't get me wrong. If we, we teach this, if you, if you let the CRM do the heavy lifting, the skill you've got to master is to be able to get on the phone with the person that you've been nurturing, the lead, and get them down the path to the place where they're ready to go out and actually look at houses or list their home for sale. Okay, so taking a prospect to an active lead is what I'm talking about working on. Okay, so how are you doing there? Where's, where do you rate yourself one to 10? What do you need to work on? Are you going to pick a new niche this, this year? Are you going to start working for sale by owners, expires? Do you know what to say? There's plenty of ways to go get educated and trained on all of that. And you can do that right with us at WBNO Coaching. Okay, the next skill that really needs some honing, in my opinion, is presenting and qualifying. Uh, you know, going back to just basic sales skills around having a professional presentation for buyers and sellers can go such a long way for two reasons. One, it can show your professionalism and it lets you guide you through if you're really going to sit down and go through with someone how you what the process is for buying or selling and how how you can show your knowledge and your expertise a great presentation and by the way we are 100 percent getting out of old school powerpoints we do all that in canva as a matter of fact what we're sharing right now on youtube matt i had put notes together today he goes let me go with, put this into a canva presentation and that's what we're doing we're actually sharing it in canva right now right any any uh, tips on how easy it is to just even choose a, a template or something that's for a presentation, Matt, to create. No, I, I, it's just fun. We, were, we were looking, we were getting ready to do our podcast this morning. We, <laughs> we were looking at the, the notes. I'm like, let's put, let's throw that in. 10 minutes later, bang, bang, boom, done. So that's the beauty of Canva. It's easy. And um, you can, you can whip something together very quickly just by using the templates that are already in there. I would never have found, I would never have created this template. And it looks very nice if I do. Yeah, so you just did it on the fly for me. Yeah, so it, it, literally. It, it definitely right. looks better than sharing a Google Doc. Right? Exactly. Uh, with the bullet points that I had to, so, to be able to stay on track. And that's the point. You can show value. You can show your expertise and you can stay on track. So presenting and qualifying is being able to ask the right questions, gather the information, and the big key here, as a matter of fact, I'm going to add it to this, uh, you know, I would add it to this if, I, if we were going to download these slides is 
you've got to figure out during the qualifying and the presenting process, what is the client's why? Why do they want to sell their house? Why do they want to buy? Totally. Super important for what's coming up here in a minute. You do it in the presenting and the qualifying. You dig deep. You keep building trust and rapport, okay, by asking the right questions, listening. And clients in the beginning, a customer, somebody that you start to work with, a buyer or seller, doesn't open up right away until they feel comfortable with you. So you'll ask a question, you'll get kind of a cursory first level, you know, the first level answer. But as you go along and they start to realize that you know what you're talking about because you're an industry expert, you really know the business, you're a great listener, you're building that trust and rapport, they'll really actually go deeper and tell you the real why. Why is this important? Well, I'll tell you why. Because it's going to help you with negotiating and closing. Okay, ah. that's the next skill set, and uh, one of the one of the most powerful things is to have to go take a class on negotiating and learning better ways to communicate. And negotiating is not yelling at the other agent, not trying to get your way, not trying to bully. Uh, the techniques, the things that I see with my team you know, just really helped me realize all through these years as a broker, how many people do not have great negotiating skills or frankly, great communication skills. There's so many people who are just drivers who just think the best way to get things done is to just, you know, take charge and to hell with everybody else. Okay. Right. That is not the way to do it. So how are you going to be able to get to closing, closing the sale, meaning actually, picking up on the buying signals, or if you're working with a buyer or seller, a potential buyer or seller, you have to know they're ready to go. You have to kind of go ask for the order. You've heard ask for the order. You have to do that. I find so many people go, okay, Matt, what do you think? What do you think? As opposed to, all right, it sounds like I've answered your questions. If, if we can do A, B, and C, because during the qualify, you find out what is it that they need to be able to make a decision. And if you can then come back and say, so, uh, we're able to answer all your questions regarding the bottom line, what you're going to net. Are you comfortable with that? Great. And then you just feed it back to them. So that brings you directly to the, okay, let's take the next step. Are you ready to get the home on the market? So I can do all the things I just talked about right. to prep it so that we can find the right buyer for your home. So you can move on to the next part of your life that you just shared with me is important. That's all when you can dig in under in the previous step with that qualify with that, uh, deep, what is there a why, then you can do it. Now, negotiating in the middle of transactions with other agents is always about finding the win-win, but it's also about there's always more than one solution. And if you come into negotiations with what does the buyer want, what does the seller want, well, generally they want the same thing. One wants to buy, one wants to sell, but sometimes people want it their way. Right. You have to find uh, you know, a way to compromise sometimes or find more. There's always more than one solution, by the way. Well, for crying out loud, that's what negotiation is. It's about finding the compromise, right? Or, and, and yes, it can lean one way or the other. But for the most part, you know, you have to be able to give a little bit, right? I mean, goodness, if you're following any of the politics or just the way our Congress <laughs> works, yeah. um, that is really what it's, you know, frankly, it, recently, I think in the numerous past years, our Congress is an example of not negotiating. That's exactly not right. Not collaborate. What I mean is collaborative deal making is you find ways to for everybody to win so I'll give you an example of collaborative deal making in real estate uh it to, just to go back to that point about our congress is not about politics it is about politics but it's about this body it doesn't matter you said something to me the other day and this is kind of important because it does bleed on down to who we are as salespeople and so forth is that our country was founded on differences of opinions that's right everybody does not have to have the same the same belief systems and all that. That's what makes the country, one of the many things that makes our country great. The power comes from, when you think about our founding fathers, I mean, I'm sure they had some knockdown drag outs and of course. similar things that have going have got, gone on. It's just amplified because of the media and the uh, internet and, and social media and so forth. But can you imagine if we were back then? I'm sure crazy things were said back and forth between the parties. Hey, we 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 love Hamilton. We know we know what happened back then in song. Play Hamilton and get it. Yeah. You know what? To that also to that point, here's the thing about negotiation that I think is really important for everyone to really kind of noodle over. 
not getting everything you want yes. does not make you the loser. You're, you're, right. you know what I mean? It's not, it's, it is, doesn't make you weak. It doesn't make you, you know, <laughs> a bad negotiator if you don't get everything because it is about collaboration. It is about collaborative deal making. So, you know, it's just so interesting. I think everyone just wants to win. And if everyone ratcheted that oh. just a little tiny bit, we'd be in a better place and everyone would, it would be the win win. Well, let's see if that can happen with all the calamitous things that are happening in our world and <laughs> right. country right now. Let's see if we can move. I put energy out there that collaborative deal making where we come together and find ways to move forward and is, is, is going to help everybody win. Yeah. But back to real estate, I'll give you a perfect example of what I mean by collaborative deal making. So if you're the buyer's agent, okay, and you are, uh, especially now, we continue to be in high inventory. I mean, sorry, I wish it was high inventory. I don't really want it to be high inventory because everything no. will shift the other way. Listings will stay on the market forever. But a more normal market, but right now we're still across the country in super low inventory situations because of so many reasons. Low interest, you know, the low interest rates is causing the demand. Yeah. Not everybody has it knows where they want to go. They're afraid to put their houses on the market. We have people in mortgage forbearance, etc. The bottom line is the um, collaborative deal making comes from you might be in a multiple offer situation is calling the other agent and finding out what you can and maybe going with the title company or the escrow company that they want, not what you want and not doing that whole thing that says, well, RESPA and start misquoting all this. That gets me riled up because people misquote what RESPA says. Sure. The buyer gets to choose the title company. No, that's not what RESPA says. RESPA says, and I'm just going to put it out there again for anybody listening. So if this is one of those things you do, this is a point of how you could collaborate deal make. OK, I know you're trying to work with your title company and your escrow company or if you're on the East Coast, uh, whoever's your closing agent because they're supporting you and so forth. But there's a couple of reasons to do this. You want that's a that's a give. Here we go. I'm going to give that and maybe we can get something. And if you call the other agent and you're trying to be a professional because so many people are not, it's refreshing to the other agent to go, wow, I want to work with this person who's trying to find ways to win with me and want and sounds professional and wants to get this done as opposed to, well, you can't choose that. And this is what RESPA does says, I'm paraphrasing, okay? The, the, it basically says the seller of real property cannot demand that a buyer purchase a title insurance from a certain company, make that a condition of the sale. That's what it says, okay? Now, it's, negoti it's negotiable who pays for the title insurance. It's customary for the seller to pay for the owner's title policy. But guess what? The buyer could pay for that. So don't misquote that. And that's such an easy yep. gift for a win-win situation to go down the path of saying, okay, great. You like to use so-and-so. And a lot of times if, if it's a complicated transaction or a weird property, they have started the preliminary title report. Maybe they've already had the deal fall out and they already have the resale package. So anyway. That just makes sense. So that's ego getting out of the way, yep. finding the win-win, trying to get the collaborative deal making going on so that we can close the sale. Okay, that's all part of that skill skill, uh, skill set as well. All right. Um, okay, so how do you work on these skill sets? Okay, how do you work and refine on this? You practice them daily. Okay, number one, you could do scripts and role playing and objection handling. Uh, even as a as a seasoned veteran, there's nothing wrong with uh, realizing, you know what, I really need to work on that and, and just make it part of your daily practice that you do that in the mornings uh, or get with somebody and do that. Get an accountability partner to practice your skills. That's an awesome thing to do. Uh, mm -hmm. We've talked about it before. This is something that a lot of folks are doing right now is that you have an accountability group or you can even start or, or um, join a real estate mastermind group. And maybe a couple times a week, you're doing a Zoom accountability together. So you could get together, you could practice and role play using Zoom. Then you can mute your mute your uh, audio and then just stay on screen and make your phone calls and do your thing and then come back with your group. It's it's kind of like going to the gym. You'll find that if you try these tactics of having help find an accountability buddy, accountability buddy uh, or a group, you actually might do it. Because honestly, back to last week, if you were to do this daily and maybe two or three times a week, and I don't know, uh, we have we, we have friends that are doing that daily. They do yeah. that together and we do it on our team three times a week, but everyone always finds an excuse to not do it. So my point is, if you did that, you would two times, three times your, your business for sure. Okay. True that. 
Uh, experience is always a great teacher. That's where we learn how to do things better or maybe recognize, maybe have some awareness around uh, problems that come up in, in the near future and go, wow, what could I be working on? What area of the whole skill set for a successful real estate agent do I need to work on? Just have some awareness around it. Uh, use a buyer and seller qualified form. I, I really highly recommend that even if you're a veteran uh, real estate agent, there's some power. We, I have, we have on our team a buyer and a seller form that just asks all the right questions. You could have them with you always and you can gather all that information. As, as you get older, not everything always stays in my head. I don't know about the rest of you. <laughs> Definitely think you need to use buyer and seller. Uh, beautiful, professional looking presentations. Even if you're just going in a pre-listing approach or something that you send to the buyer and seller, that can really reflect how professional you are. And, and to go back to it, you can build those in Canva. And if you're not a Canva user, in our show notes today, there's a link to go and explore Canva and to sign up. There's a free version and there's a, you know, a upgraded version. Both are fantastic. So go check out that link. Excellent. Take specific training classes. Uh, get a certification or designation. There actually is a negotiations certification course for real estate agents that you could go and you could learn all these really powerful techniques and strategies to hone that skill for you if that's an area that you're weak in. And uh, finally, you know, hire a coach or a mentor. Find it. You don't have to necessarily do that with us. There's plenty of coaches and uh, people out there that can help you with uh, developing these skills and, and holding you accountable to them and, and helping you out with that. So that, my friends, is our second podcast of 2021 as we're going down this whole path of uh, how do you go in this year and meet or exceed all your goals. And so today it was hone your real estate sales skills. That's awesome. Good stuff. You're listening to the Wandering But Not Lost podcast, where real estate and reality meet. Join us and subscribe on Apple Podcasts, Stitcher, Spotify, iHeartRadio, Google Play, and now on YouTube. Well, that is a wrap for episode 150 of the Wandering But Not Lost podcast. You can find all of our show notes over at WBNLpodcast.com. Uh, if you haven't already subscribed to our Facebook group, we would love you to join us. Go over to Facebook and you can go to the WBNL Wanderers Club. We'll, you know, once we check you out, I'm just kidding. Uh, ask to join, we'll let you in there. And then every single week we are uh, serving up tips and tricks and hacks. Monday, we have uh, uh, real estate and motivation and uh, inspirational tips from Jan O'Brien. Tuesday, Cosmo Robbie jumps in with uh, some great tech tips. I do a Canva training every Wednesday. Uh, and then of course our WBNL podcast on Friday. So we have a lot of stuff going on and even more training and insights coming up in the future. Make it a great week, everybody. Yep, and be forever wandering, but not lost.